Welcome to Dark Horizon Creations. I'm Mike. This time we're taking a look at the Ghostbusters Afterlife Ecto-1 playset by Hasbro. Now if you haven't already, please follow, like, and subscribe to my social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get a notification of when I post new content. I want to tell you all up front, I am not a fan of Ghostbusters Afterlife. I didn't even watch the movie. I watched a bunch of different clips from different scenes of the movie, and I just didn't like what I saw. And I refused to pay to watch a movie that I knew I wasn't going to like. You may be asking yourself, then, why are you reviewing a toy from the movie? Well, a few reasons. First, it was free. <laughs> Second, I wanted to review the toy. And third, I wanted to customize it. I want to repaint it so I can use it for toy photography. So let's talk about the toy. First and foremost, I do like the box art. I think it is really, really cool. I think the art of Ecto-1 really evokes the original spirit, if I could use that word, of the car. I also like the yellow and black caution tape. You know, immediately that, that takes my mind back to the Ecto-1A from Ghostbusters 2. I, I do like the artwork and, and, and how they drew this. And I do like the original Ghostbusters logo being on the box. On the side panel, you've got some images of the new characters. And on the back, you have your obligatory product shot. So the toy in an action sequence. And it doesn't look bad. I do like the way that it looks. I don't care for the radio control ghost trap on wheels and the gunner's seat. The one drawback to this toy that I can point out right off of the bat is the fact that the driver door does not open. The other issue with that that you're gonna see is that you can only put two figures in this car. You could at least put three in the Kenner Ecto-1, if not four. Let's get this thing out of the box and see what it's all about. Okay, so here we have Ecto-1 outside of the packaging, fully assembled. So to begin, the first thing that I did was begin to apply the decals before I assembled it. All four of the white wall decals for the tires ripped. Some of them ripped in multiple places. The two rear decals are designed to be two separate halves. So you apply one half, spin the tire around and apply the other one. If you look at this front one, you can see how jacked up it is. This one doesn't look so bad. If I flip it around, that one doesn't look so bad. This one doesn't look so bad until you look close and see where they tore and I wasn't able to align them properly. Second thing I wanna talk about is the Ghostbusters logo. Tore at the hand, so yeah. I mean, you can barely see it, but it's there. You know, and I, I don't like that. I really don't. I really want to be able to, to remove this and, and fix it if I can. If not, I'm going to end up taking all of them off and using Apple Barrel craft paint to repaint the white wall onto the tires. So again, looking at it, it doesn't look bad. The toy is 14 inches in length. It is 5 inches wide and 7 inches tall. I would love it if the driver's side door opened. I thought I could purchase another one of these, cut the parts on one, modify it, and put them, put them together and, and make a functioning driver's side door. I don't think that's really possible just because of the way it's designed because the upper part of the car has this part of the door. If you turn it around, you see the passenger side door opens as flimsy as it does. If you open the back, it slides out like this with that gunner seat. And you can see the interior. And you can see how the top part of the car clips in to that location. So you would have to use a Dremel and remove all of that. Remove that screw post that you see bracing that side of the wall. I don't think it's really going to be doable. I don't know if I want to invest that much time plus buying another one of these out of pocket just to modify. I may and I may not. But while we have it here, you can see that you can fit one action figure in there. I don't have any 
to, to try. The passenger side door does open and that's why. And you can see there's only leg room up front for one passenger. But if you take your finger and hook it around here, this part of the dash could be cut out with a Dremel to make more room. So that's the, the front passenger side door. On this side, you can see this gimmick for the aft door to slide out and come around back for the gunner seat and it kind of locks in place. I don't see where this is an issue. You know, some people were talking about how flimsy it is and it flops open. I don't think it's really going to do that unless you like really force it. You know, you can remove the cannon from the top and then attach it here for a character to use, but you can't leave it and, and close the door. It's not going to work. So you have to you have to slide the door in, close that first, then close the passenger side door. On the back, the back door comes down as a ramp and drops out the radio control ghost trap, which I think is really goofy. You know, the, the back door plugs into this, this part here that holds the ghost trap. You could take a rotary tool and cut all of this down and sand it down so that you just have the back door and then get a, uh, a toy stretcher from like maybe the WWE ambulance or something and modify it to make a proton pack rack to pull in and out of the back. And this just closes with friction. And I mean, you, you, you kind of have to take this and push it under these little tabs to get it to secure in place. Again, this car isn't horrible for, as, as far as the way it looks. There's plenty of potential to repaint this and make it look much, much nicer. But it's just not the looks. You know, when, when you talk about customizing a toy, particularly one like this, it's not just the appearance that you want to change, it's the functionality. You know, you want that driver's side door to open. But are you willing to invest in a second car to cannibalize one of them for parts in order to make this work? Because, you know, when when you get this car and it's in two separate parts, that's when you want to customize things. And you would have to cut directly down these seams on the bottom portion and the top portion. And I mean, this is a slow, fine cut at a very low RPM, you know, right around 3000 RPM, maybe just a tad higher to cut these out without risking the blade jumping and gouging something else. If you wanted to do that, it has loads of potential and repainting this is a minimum to save this toy, honestly. Okay, yes, and there may be some of you who are like, well, I just don't get the customizing thing. Okay, great, I understand your perspective. Repainting it is a minimal requirement for me to, to make this worth keeping in the collection, to, to own it, even though I didn't pay out of pocket for it. You know, I think the greatest disappointment with this toy for me are the decals. I think those should have at least been a, a much better quality than what they are. I, if I remember correctly on the Kenner Ecto-1, where the Ghostbuster decal went on the door, I think it was an actual indentation on the door. So there's no, no way you could miss putting the decal where it was supposed to go. There's so much potential with a toy like this. Fortunately, you know, if you're not willing to invest in, in customizing it, then it's a compromise. You can play with it as it is, or you can repaint it to make it at least look more realistic than what, what you get out of the box. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have the Ghostbusters Afterlife Ecto-1 playset by Hasbro.